Naptown, the city that always sleeps. Most people think nothing happens in this town that is halfway between nothing and nowhere, but they would be wrong. There is plenty that goes on in this town for those willing to look. Putting themselves in harm's way, both teams have drunk a rose martini. Those that drink of the martini are hearing voices in their head, and the crew has some fresh leads to track down. But will the leads turn into something more, or will it burn out like so many other leads in the city that always sleeps? Okay, last time on Naptown, Faye, Gideon, and Tanner had a run-in at the Silver Chatterbox with Lucia. Afterwards, they tried to keep their cool and lay low, and figured out that Gideon has some information about a bootlegging operation that is in about to take place. Because of him drinking the rose martini and listening to Lillian sing. Yes, that. Seamus and Darling had similar experiences where a voice was talking in the back of Darling's head after she drank the rose martini. And they are still trying to figure out what to do on their way out of the Blue Ruin. So we're going to jump into Gideon, Tanner, and Faye all outside the bootlegging operation. Um, It is unloading a boat into trucks. You notice um, some other people around that all seem to be in a... Well, actually, make a roll. Like, if you guys... Make your investigation rolls to see what you guys are learning, you know. And you can ask questions. Are you using anything on that? No. I'm going to use private detective and things that are hidden. Okay. And that is a eight. You'll get one question very clearly answered. The other two will be a little bit more fuzzy. You have three questions, though. But you do notice some people milling about. I'm also saying that you guys are kind of like at a a little bit of a distance. You guys are like still in the car parked off to the side. So you're not like up with them, like investigating them unless you guys want to get up in their faces. What I would like to clearly know the answer to is an... Caitlin, feel free to tell me this is a dumb question to ask. I want to know if what they are bootlegging is alcohol or magic mind control potion. Like, if it's alcohol, I don't care. Like, Tanner's jokingly for prohibition, but not really. Um, Like, he differentiates between tiers of crime, you know? But if this is, like, mind control juice then my response will be different. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, At this point, it, from what you can tell, like without opening up like crates and like actively testing every bottle, uh, it is alcohol. Okay. Well, I'm all for everyone getting their liquor, but uh, not when they have to coerce people to do it. How are you feeling, Gideon? Uh, I mean, uh, it's about the same as when we, when you last checked in, you know, still hearing directions on what to do in my own voice, which is a little odd, but I... I think I'm able to handle it fine. Are you being told to take the alcohol someplace? Um, currently all it is saying is unload the alcohol at this place, which is what it's been saying for the last while. This mind control potion is surprisingly good at logistics, like they're divvying up the tasks. So, a good way to put this is like video game objectives. Yeah. Like, because he has not completed the objective, it's not going to tell him what to do next. So it's just telling him, like, go to this place. He hasn't gone there, so the voice is just saying, go to this place. Go to this place. That's still his objective. Gideon, you want to get out and unload some alcohol? <laughs> I mean, I'm not super in favor of this, but I can. Can we wait until it looks like it's almost done so that he wouldn't have to do it for very long? That's a good idea. Okay, so you guys stick around for a bit. Well, while we're just awkwardly sitting there, like Tanner's just kind of like drumming his fingers on the wheel and just goes, so I promise I'm not doing this just to mess with you, by the way. It feels like if I wanted to be messing with you, intentionally giving you a drug drink and then making you do what it says seems like messing with you. It's That's not what this is, and I just don't want it to be weird because I'm having you go and like unload boxes. It's weird, but not for that reason. All right, as long as you're cool, I'm cool. So you guys wait a little bit of time, not terribly long. It's There's quite a few people. And then, so you have Gideon go over there. What are you having him do? Like Just whatever he thinks he should do. Like, if it's unload the boxes, then go some go to the next place. Just so he gets the next ping of what okay. to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he goes, he helps the people. They all, like, get into different trucks. And there's, like, one truck that's that like obviously Gideon's supposed to get into which he doesn't as he walks back over to you guys uh well it's now telling me to deliver it to and he like lists the bar somewhere I wanna can I mm, okay I understand that in reality you might not have a name for this bar Tanner would make a note of it and then that would be enough he does 
He does. Like, I don't have an... In reality, Zach doesn't have a name for this bar. He you lists- know what? Can I can I say this, then? The, it's it's not a bar I've heard of, and it's yet another one that seems to be under the influence of this bootlegger. Yes. So there's, like, a lot of bars. It's not just these three that we've found. And there are a lot of trucks that you saw. You saw more than three trucks. Okay. Okay. That's that's enough information for me to feel good. You saw more than four trucks. Are there, Some might be going to, like, warehouses or something. You don't know. But, like, for Gideon, it's saying to go to a bar. Okay. So can we head back to the Mystical Grove? Is that you can? Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is while we're heading back, but this seems a little extravagant for just a distribution process. I feel like this is maybe laying some groundwork for something bigger. Yeah, like I understand that it's like deniability, and he's not having to pay anybody. But this is a lot of effort for free labor, for sure. I, I kind of agree, but at the same time, there's the tr- it, it all. It's like not just deniability; it's untraceability. Still, I mean, that's true. That's true. But I mean, like, I, I could be wrong. I'm only a military man myself, but it's the idea that, like, if even, if anyone gets caught, no one can even pretend to give him up or anything about him because they know nothing about him. And when you're doing heavy bootleg like miss cameron how long how long would you say you'd put away someone who's doing this much alcohol trafficking oh i don't know it depends on their lawyer that is the most lawyer answer you could have given to a question uh i i guess you could it, it, it could be for some years but it just seems like a lot and leaves more loose ends than it solves you've got a lot of people claiming not to know how they got somewhere and what they were doing there, it seems like it would call more attention to itself than it's worth. Yeah, I mean, at some point, the police are going to get enough reports of, I didn't know what I was doing. Like, yeah, that's a line that you get from people, but not every single criminal, you know? It begins to form a pattern. Right, right. This is the, what, fifth bar we've heard of that has been this alcohol at it or had weird things happening at it. It seems like their aim is wide wide distribution which makes me a little nervous what they're planning that's all i'll say i mean what you're saying makes sense but remember people seem to ignore what we're all able to do true that's a fair point that's a fair point and then you guys you guys are able to make it to the myth- mystical grove easily enough darling and Seamus. yes so as we stated before you got you guys aren't really noticing people are clearing out of the blue ruin after the second set nothing super crazy is happening you guys they all seem to be normal looking enough. So, uh, darling, how, how are you doing there? You feeling all right? Yeah, I mean, I get a little distracted here and there, but it's nothing that I can't handle. It's pretty... I can I can handle whatever this is. As we... So we head out with... And, like, there are other people out, too. Is there a group of people heading somewhere? Are they all... Do they all seem to be heading out individually? What are we looking at? They all seem to be heading to their own cars or walking out individually. There's like pairs and small groups of people, but none that like not a mob, you know, nothing that would really draw attention of your guys's. Well, um, I don't know. It's not like we're following a big group of them anywhere. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be a clear direction any of them are going. Uh, We could just head back to the Mystical Grove and try to catch up with the others if they head back there. Unless you want to actually go rob a bank, he jokes. No, I would really rather not rob a bank. And uh, as much as I think that you would be able to stop me, I would rather not risk it. So, I, I yeah, I think let's go back to the Grove and see what everyone else is doing. So we do that. <laughs> you guys arrive back at the Grove all around kind of the same-ish time. Maybe you're waiting around for a little bit, but not horribly wrong. Uh, the Grove always seems to be kind of open. You guys are always able to get in. You know, you've never been there when it's closed, at least. There's a couple people milling about. The bartender's there. I don't remember her name right now. Not pushing rose martinis? Not pushing rose martinis, surprisingly enough. Oh, uh, wait. Who did you say was there first? Uh, you two. Seamus and Darling. Okay. Um, I think uh, Darling goes up and uh, for the first time ever orders just water. And it is the best water you have tasted. <laughs> oh, good. No, she sits down and she's trying to like... Because even though it's not a hangover, trying to do that thing where, like, you're trying to drink enough water that you're not going to be hungover in the morning, almost like that'll get rid of it. Um, Sylvia, like, a- after a little bit, she, like, 
like puts it together. You're drinking water. She walks over and says, "Like here, try this," and says, like uh, drops like like um what are they called like hangover cure kind of things. Hot sauce and. <laughs> Do you drink it? <laughs> Sylvia, what what uh what is this, Sylvia? A good bartender never reveals her tricks. I think I'll. I, I think she'll give it a, a sip and see if anything changes. So this is one of those drinks that looks absolutely disgusting. You know, like it has like that hot sauce stuff. But you taste it, and it is a little, a little odd, but surprisingly good. And as you you like you take a tentative sip, and you're like, oh, this is this isn't bad. And you start drinking it a little bit faster. And as you do, the voice in the back of your head lessens the more you drink it. All right. Darling looks at the drink, very, which is empty, very surprised. Well, uh, that certainly did the trick, Sylvia. I don't know if I want to know what was in it. She gives you a smile and a nod and goes back to doing her thing. Great. Uh, Darling, like, looks over at Seamus. Yeah, they're gone. I'm, I'm not hearing anything anymore. Well, at least we know that it's not a permanent condition i think we i mean i guess we kind of already suspected that but it's good to know that you don't have to go rob the bank before it'll go away well and actually maybe we will want to find out what's in this um you know it's a good way to reverse whatever i drank in that rose martini so do we uh show up at this yes. point the well, other th- three of you show up it's weird to hear you talk about yourself in the third person because you're one of the three <laughs> <laughs> I would go over and join them at their table. So, how was your evening of investigation? Well, um, I, I guess this, this isn't really the right language, but uh, Darling almost robbed a bank, but not quite that strong. Did you drink the thing? Of course I did. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Are you sure? Yes, actually, Sylvia got me something, and there, I don't... Nothing's telling me to rob a bank now. I was very concerned about the drinks, like, right away, so... But, I mean, that's good. Well, there were only two of us, Tanner, and if one person was going to be able to stop the other person, it wasn't going to be me. (laughs) You see Gideon immediately go over to the bar and talk to Sylvia and come back with one of those drinks. (laughs) Okay, full full disclosure, we may have let Gideon drink one of the drinks. (laughs) Darling shrugs. No harm, no foul, right? I mean, by let me drink one of the drinks, he paid for me the drink to me, handed to me, waited till I drank, and then said, it might be hexed. Yeah, I did that. That's exactly what I did. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But you're feeling better now? I take it they were pushing rose martinis at your place as well? Yes. Yeah, yeah seems like that's what everyone was drinking there. Um, so I think, right, I think we all had the same experience, except, um, do you remember that scary lady that I asked out for pasta? Lucia. Yeah, her. Y- yes. She's back. Well, that can't be good. Really? Yep. Yep. I think the fortunate thing is she doesn't know about Gideon, so we got that going for us, but she was at the chatterbox. What did she want? Us to s- stop investigating, so we let Gideon do it and Faye shapeshifted. So now they've expanded to whatever's happening at the jazz halls and not just what Lennox was doing. Seem to be the case, yeah. Great. So Gideon got directions in his head as well, and it led him to a place where they were offloading um, some liquor, and then... Wait, did you guys actually go to where it was telling him to go? Well, yes. Yeah, Gideon's a bootlegger now. Yeah, it's a real promotion. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Mister, I'm all about justice, and uh, hey, don't drink that, that's illegal, and a lawyer go to a bootlegging operation. That, I think there's a joke in there somewhere. It feels like there is. But the punchline is nothing. We don't know why they're going to all this trouble trouble just to distribute liquor when other bootlegging operations seem to be doing just fine. I'm worried that there's a bigger play here. Gideon was going to be sent to an entirely new uh, speakeasy. We've no idea how many have been infiltrated by this combination of magical booze and music. And I'm worried there's something bigger. Yeah, and it concerns me, too, that it seems like it's it's uh, spreading in that it's, you know, it just, uh, yes, it just feels like more and more bars are getting whatever this is, and it's staying where it was. Like, the Red Phoenix still has... Yeah, it didn't follow, um, it didn't follow, you know, that other singer. It wasn't just her, it's... 
all of them. Mm-hmm. Right. So did you all have a thought on what's where to go next with this? I did. And I have a feeling, darling, you're either going to love this idea or you're going to be mad at me for suggesting it. I'm hoping the latter. <laughs> I kind of want to break into the silver chatterbox tonight. Why tonight? It's busy tonight. Well, I'm sorry. It's, when I say tonight, I mean much later tonight. It's Saturday night still. <laughs> when, however late it is until people stop being there, because, and I guess maybe early tomorrow, whatever. Um, but one, I want to see if there's any like evidence in a back office of where this stuff's coming from and who's shipping it and where we can find, like, because the alcohol, I think, is just alcohol. I, I got a feeling it's the rose water, which I'd like to confirm as well. Um... And also to maybe, like, get rid of the rose water so the silver chatterbox isn't doing this anymore. Oh, can we also... Do you think our friend Lennox Willis could test the martini that you brought back, Tanner? Oh, yeah! I brought back a martini in my thermos. Oh, you actually, like, managed to manage to get a sample. That's I'm sure that could help us. I'm extremely dexterous with one hand. <laughs> he looks at Darling. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... I mean, I guess I don't hate that idea. I'm actually thinking if we want to keep investigating the chatterbox, if maybe I should have just taken tonight off and then it wouldn't be suspicious for me to be going back in there. So it's less of a break in. Did did we know? This is out of character. Did we... Did you tell us what excuse you gave the chatterbox? I just said family emergency or something. It's it, It was really... I mean, General. if we get caught, you could say, uh, you know, left my handbag, had something important in it or whatever, you know. That would it'd be a good reason to have you come with us, for sure. That's true. And I don't necessarily have the ability to get into every room, but I can certainly open up at least some doors backstage. Very few doors resist me pushing them hard enough. That's how I get into most places. As we've previously seen. Metagame note? Um, I'm not going to punish Darling for going here. Okay. You know, like, if if you get caught, that's because of the rules. You're not going to just be like, they notice you immediately. Well, you know? I want to go after it's empty. Like, I want to go in off hours. You know what I mean? If that's... They've closed up. Yeah. If that's yeah. daytime, like, just early morning, then fine. We'll do that. But if that's, like... You know what I mean? I imagine, like, five... Four or five in the morning is when I'm aiming. Yeah, it's it's around then. I just wanted to let you guys know, like Mandy, know that she doesn't have to just like every time they mention the silver chatterbox, she doesn't have to bench herself, even if it's not weird times. No, I figured. Um, just trying to figure out narratively what we're doing. Yeah, I I think that's a perfectly fine idea. So let's see. I'm usually off work at like one, so they've probably officially closed up about three ish. So then I guess give them an hour to clean, and then we show up and maybe make a tiny mess. Just a little bit. Mm, Let's try to avoid the mess. As much as possible, I promise. Unless we find, like, a case of that rose water, then I might go prohibition on it, you know? (laughs) Does does that mean you're going to light the silver chatterbox on fire? No, no, I I think that's a little bit extreme. I mean, that is what you did with the last place you, air quotes, went prohibition on. (laughs) I like that as the thing that I do, though. I'm going to start using that as a threat. I love it. So I, guess I hate we wait. you all. <laughs> I guess we wait until that time to head over. All right. And we give the stuff to Lennox Willis. Oh, yeah. I want to talk to him. Right. Well, I just mean, yes, give him the stuff. Well, hello, Detective Tanner. How are you? I've been great. I've been settling in great here. Thank you for helping me out. Things are amazing. Like, Sylvia here is super nice. I love learning everything. Do you want a drink? I could get you a drink. I've been working on all these new drinks. Did you know I know what a cosmopolitan is? It isn't just a weird word. It's also a drink. It has a lot of ingredients. I'm really good at making them now. Sylvia said so. She said that they were passable. And that is, like at least to see from where I'm from, and that is great, and I'm just, like, loving this job. Oh, wait, you still... I don't see you drink here a lot, so maybe maybe we should start you with uh, something, like, less alcohol Maybe we should just, like, go, like, a straight vodka thing. Just, like, only vodka. Like, less alcohol in it, the better. So, like, if I just do one type of alcohol, that would be better. And, like, that's really great. So, like, yeah. All right, so anyways... <laughs> Darn, I was hoping you'd just keep going. I was... I was just going to wait. I was just going to like see how long you were going to go with that and just keep letting you go. <laughs> I know at some point in there, the idea was that I was going to interrupt you, but I'm like, 
You know what, though? <laughs> you guys are all <laughs> monsters. Yeah. You guys are all monsters with that because every time he appears, you guys are like, I'm going to let him talk for as long as As a as forward he can. GM, that's a mean <laughs> thing to do. Um, I hand him the thermos and go, All right, there's magic potion in there. Can you make an anti magic potion? I mean, isn't that what uh, Sylvia just did right over there for your friends? Could you make like a gaseous mass application anti magical potion? So, like, he looks over at Sylvia and she walks over. I, I don't know if I can make a gaseous one, but I could make a few drafts that would probably last you a, a little bit of time. Can you make them in gun form? I'm a bartender. Not a munition. Fair. Fair point. Fair point. I was just checking your inventory. Um, well, I guess do science on it and tell me what you can find out about it. Cool. So he will work on that, probably with the help of Sylvia, since she's the bartender. <laughs> uh, that makes sense. And she probably has a better idea of what she's doing, you know. He's more interested in human experimentation. All right, so we head off at the appropriate time. Yep, you head off at the appropriate time. It is very late for all of you. You are all very tired. Except for maybe Darling. She is still tired. I was going to say at some point while they're waiting, uh, she definitely falls asleep on the table. <laughs> Just like puts her head down and falls asleep. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if we could like take a nap for like three hours and then wake up. Anyway, I mean, it's still you're still not very well rested. Have you ever tried to sleep for three hours before a trip? Yes, I have. Yeah, it's terrible. It's weird. So, you guys take your naps, those who are willing. The others, you just shoot the breeze for, you know, four hours, five hours. Tanner drinks 12 cups of coffee. Sylvia keeps bringing you cups of coffee. It's really good coffee. So, you guys get into the, your cars, head to the Silver Chatterbox. Each one of you needs to make a sneak around roll, since you are trying to be any of this place. Can I use uh, access to most people, since this is my workplace? I will 100% allow that. Actually... Can I use my danger sense? Mm -hmm. So yeah, this isn't necessarily... B and E isn't exactly what you're doing, because Darling has a key to get in. It's more you're trying not to be noticed as you guys enter a place that should not be entered at this time of night kind of thing. Yeah, well, and that's why I would argue access to most people, because she's aware of who would be there and can like... Yeah, you could definitely have that. Okay. Can I go to my raven shape, just so there's like one fewer person on the street, you know? Yep, you can do that. I rolled... I got a ten. I rolled an eight with a uh, private detective. I also got an eight. Seven. I got a ten with Raven Shape. So you guys are able to make it in there well enough. You are pretty quiet. Things go fine. Uh, and you're in the building. Cool. I think uh, Darling is probably taking the lead on this one and heading backstage directly um, cause I would assume like everything comes from that back area, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like there's, there's like the two, uh, there's like the normal restaurant area and then there's the speakeasy and then like behind those is ro- back backstage and like where food and drinks come from. So we go back there and I point out which one is like the food and drink storage area. All right. Um, who's ever trying to find the rose water? Make an investigation check. I want to do private detective and finding dirt. I'll allow it. Can I do intelligent? Yes. Okay, I got an eight. I got an 11. All right, you guys are able to find it easily enough. It takes you a little bit of time, but nothing terrible. You know, like it's not like you bumble around. How many bottles are there? Surprisingly few. Are there a lot of empty ones? Like they used a ton tonight or? That would not be stored back here. So you don't know. Okay. But it's not for the amount of the making like a quick count of like what you do, like they did tonight. It seems really low the amount they have in stock. You know, it's like, it's like kind of so like. I don't it, have like a rose water Jesus. Just like make it more. Yeah. It's kind of like um, if you walked into a diner and you looked at like how many cups they have and you noticed like they have the amount that you have like at a household. You're like, okay. well, this is like enough cups to serve a, a few people, but not enough to serve a restaurant, you know? Okay. And there's not like a bunch of empty crates. No, not that you see. Okay. But this is a very tidy place, so there's not a lot of empty crates of anything lying around. This is a weird question. What are the caps like on the bottles? 
I have no idea. What what are you asking about them more specifically? Well, if if they're corked, can I uncork them, dump them out, and then recork them and leave them? Yes. Do I need to make a roll for that, or can we just say that I did that? You do that. That's fine. Okay. Can Tanner detect the if the magic is? Oh yeah. From also the rose water specifically. Um, yes, there is magic in it. Okay. Then yeah, I definitely dump all them out. Except for maybe one okay. that I like keep. Sounds good. Are you doing anything else here? Something we should note, if they don't have a lot, that might mean they're getting another shipment tonight from other mind-controlled people, so we might want to make this quick. That's a valid point. While they're doing that, I want to go into the dressing room, and I want to go through Lillian's area. Cool. Make an investigation check. No vent out of there. <laughs> I want to argue that uh, I can use I want to get to the top. Okay. You're going to, like, slash her clothes or something? <laughs> I mean, that's not what I want to do, but... <laughs> no, it's what you want to do. It's not what you should do. Yeah. <laughs> I'll also give you rumors, because you're, like, kind of trying to, like, figure out stuff about, you know... Okay. Uh, that is a seven. Oof, not great. Okay, ask your questions. What are you trying to figure out about her? I'm trying to see if there's anything that would lead me to believe that she is doing something unnatural to get where she is. So as you look at her desk and area, you don't find anything weird. You know, so you're like sitting there, you're going through thinking like, okay, there's got to be something somewhere, you know, like, and then, but you don't see anything at all. But then you like sit down and like look over at the wall and you see a flyer or a couple of flyers. You see one that's like basically said that she's headlining this week. Which you know is something that never happens here. Like, you do not headline the first your first week. You know, like, you are background singer for a decent amount of time. So for her to headline within a day of starting is, like, unheard. Like, it's just an impossible thing that has happened. You know, like... Yeah. To the point where, like, you could sleep with every manager and it still wouldn't happen. Yeah. Well, and also, there's other people, like, who could have easily taken that who have had their time here. Right. So, like, it's... And even if there weren't, like, you don't think this, like, this isn't something that happens, you know, like, they would have found someone else yeah. kind of thing. So if you do sabotage her, there's a lot of other potential suspects besides you. <laughs> yeah. The other thing you do find in her desk is, like, um, a planner. Okay. And flipping through, you do see that next Friday she will be singing at the Kinley uh, Ball. All right. Which is a very high society thing that happens... Once a year, you have been trying to get in as a singer there for quite a while. It's kind of, it's a really huge deal. Yeah. It's it's like the biggest party of the season. You've been trying to get in there for a while and you have not even gotten close. You know, like you haven't even gotten like the call back. asked to the auditions. Oh, oh, even worse. Yeah. Yeah. And like, and you're a good singer is the thing. Like, it's not that you're bad by any stretch. You are by all rights a fantastic singer but it is very exclusive yeah no that makes sense uh so yeah darling's feeling a little heated right now anything else you guys would like to do oh yeah i want to try to find if they have like a back office area like where a manager would sit you do you find that darling can point okay. you to where the boss's room is yeah, i'm gonna go with him and i'm just investigating around see if there's like a ledger of shipments that include rosewater See if there's, like, letters with, like, a name on it. No, uh, Seamus, make an investigation roll. Yeah, I want to, and I'm I'm specifically trying to find things that are, like, not sitting out in the open. Like, I want to find, like, a drawer, because, like, some places like this might have, like, one set of books, like, the public-facing books, and then their actual books. Yeah, yeah. That type of thing. Works for me. So I'm going to use my CD Unseen. Um, I am also going to invoke your Only Within Sight. Okay. Weakness, so you'll get to mark something on that, but you are using your magic powers, and one of the downsides to it is you have to be able to see stuff more so. Okay. Which, I mean, it's more your uncanny instinct, but I think that's fair for, like, your powers work better in sight, so. Then, in that case, so I added the one minus the one is a 10. Which one, and I add attention to the uncanny instinct one? Yep. Then that one will level up. Beautiful. Cause I figure, like, it kind of, like, relates to all of your, you know, like, yeah. all of your powers kind of, like, are work together in tandem so and you and you hear uh ba, 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 as he like levels up right there in the office <laughs> so you're looking for stuff that's unseen like ledgers and stuff that like the stuff tanner's looking for but like the like hidden away stuff yeah uh so you go through and you don't you find the ledger it's easy enough they're not super hidden or they're they're like hidden but not like impossible to find and you see like when shipments of alcohol are coming in and stuff and the weird part is you don't see any mention of rosewater this is uh this is strange. 
None of their books seem to have any mention of Rosewater coming in. Yeah, that almost doesn't surprise me. So they have shipment information for illegal alcohol, but not for the Rosewater. Yes, um, as you look through, uh, as an other note, like, you check the normal ledger as well, like, the, like, the non-alcohol one, and it also does not have rose water. So it seems to me that this rose water just doesn't exist, so I guess we're done here, right? Again, he cracks a smile. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> no, nothing, nothing strange going on, it was our imagination. I guess Gideon's imagination, you know. And Darling, so I guess we weren't here, but <laughs> I'm assuming we'll find something similar there, too, if we were to check it, check it out. Yeah... Um, does it say anywhere, like, just a name of the owner of the bar? Which, if you don't have a name, that's fine. We can just say that I know it. Yeah, you find the manager's name. I guess what I'm asking is, is there a manager or an owner? What are you thinking the difference is? Was a manager told, hey, start selling these rose water things? Or did an owner go, this is my speakeasy and I've decided I sell rose water mar- uh, martinis? I think they're one and the same in this... Okay, okay, that's that's fine. That's fine. I mean like there's levels, but like I think you're in the office of like the like the, the highest manager is the owner. Gotcha. There is there is middle management which, you know, like they all use this office, but Yeah, that's really all I wanted to know. All right. Are anything else anyone wants to do here? <clears throat> no, I can't think of anything either. So, as you walk out, can I shape shift back into raven shape? You can. Okay. As so you I need walk to roll out. For that? What? No, you don't have to roll for that. Okay. You're good. You hear Hands where I can see him, as you see a police officer holding up a gun to you all. Faye is a bird, so Faye can get away without anything. We- well, I mean, like, it's weird that a bird just flew out of a building. I think I, like, am hopping around on the ground out of the way. Darling puts her hands up, and, like, she very clearly has uh, a key in her hand. Like, she's trying to, like, show it, you know? So she's got her hands up, but, like, her, like, thumb and her forefinger are holding a key. Officer, I... It, this has got to be a misunderstanding. I I work here. I'm so sorry. I'm sure we set off something, but I just, I could not find my keys for my apartment. And I just had to, I had to come back. I'm so sorry. That seems real suspicious that you and two, three burly looking guys are just all here to f- get one thing from the, the back. Sometimes we work as private security. Yeah, and uh, I'm, I've, I've known her for a while, and I was, I was here. I volunteered to help her find her key, because, I mean, if you can't get into your apartment, that's, that's, a tough, that's a tough thing to happen to anybody. You call the locksmith. You don't bring a bunch of guys to raid a fine establishment that does not have a speakeasy. Yeah, you, you, try, you try calling a locksmith at 4 a.m. She could have slept the night at your place. So someone needs to make a convince roll to get out of this. Uh, I'm going to. Because <laughs> have key. <laughs> I'm sure is a plus one. <laughs> uh, no, because control the will of others. And could I also say that I'm the center of attention? Because I'm trying to say, like, it's my fault. Like, look at me. I'm the singer here. Yeah, I'll give you those. Can okay. you get close enough to touch him? No, she cannot. <laughs> I don't think I'm close enough. I know I have my I have my hands up. I, I didn't think that would be one. Um He has a gun trained on you guys, you know. Is he is he the only one? Yes. Okay. Then I won't do confine the weak link. Uh that is an eight. So he looks you up and down for a long time. Eyes up here, buddy. <laughs> I was gonna say creep. <laughs> Let me see give me the key and like he has to like tells you to put it on the ground and slide it to him. Yeah. Um. And then he has you guys like come out or like step back into the thing and he tries the lock and it it does work. So he's like, okay, but next time don't look all shady and sneaky while you're doing it. Someone across the street noticed some weird burly guys breaking into the establishment and called the cops. Don't let this happen again. Maybe only bring one friend when you forget lose your key, not the entire neighborhood. Sorry, officer. I just you know. It's hard to make it less obvious that I'm bringing them back to my apartment. And she winks at him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he lets you guys go. Yay. Caca, caca. <laughs> <laughs> I wish uh, I could turn into a bird. <laughs> for reference, the reason that Faye got to turn immediately back into a bird is because she rolled an 11 while the rest of you failed. Or mixed success. That's fine. Uh, so I guess we all get back in the car. Yes. So I know that um, that whole rose water thing is definitely 
a part of this. But have you seen this? And uh, she holds up one of the flyers that says that Lillian is headlining. This doesn't happen. She's, yeah. I realize she may not be the main person here, but like, I don't, she's on my radar and not just because I don't like her. I kind of didn't want to mention it because it felt, I don't know, like a slight. Yeah, I, d- no kidding. Wait, where, where she's. Where is she singing, darling? Well, okay. So this says that she's headlining here at the Chatterbox for this weekend. Right. And I did also see that uh, in her planner that on Friday or next Friday, she is singing at the Kinley Ball, which I don't even know how she got an audition for that. Do you know how many years I've been trying to audition for that? I'm guessing it has something to do with Rosewater Martinis. Uh, the you know, at this point, I'm making that connection, too. At least you didn't drug your way to where you are. Yeah, and uh, about that uh, Rosewater, um, their books have no record of any of it ever arriving here. They don't seem to have any mention of Rosewater anywhere. So they're clearly trying to hide it. I guess I have some good news. I will actually be attending the Kinley Ball next Friday, courtesy of my mother. Brother. Brother. Well, I mean, sort of. My My mother's... Set it has set me up with some probably horrible person, and I promised I'd go to make mother happy. Ooh, do you know who it is? No, I thought it better not to ask. I was gonna ask if you get a plus one, but it's sounding like your plus one has been decided for you. It's been decided. Never mind. But I'll be there. Do they frequently invite private detectives that sometimes do poor work for the firm to these types of events? <laughs> I could maybe convince them to hire a private a bodyguard or something. <laughs> the DM is shaking his head no. What about your firm, Seamus? Do they ever hire you all out for that ball? Uh, as far as I know, they not for this event. Hmm. It's it's a bit, a bit too even uh, highfalutin even even for us. Like, yeah, we get hired by all kinds of all kinds of people looking for protection, but this is this is like even be above and beyond that. This is the event of the season, and it, like it is all stop pulled out kind of thing. You know, like this is like the party to go to, and like the fact that like Faye, Faye, her like her whole family isn't invited is kind of noteworthy of how exclusive it is. Yeah, like her whole family only gets two tickets sometimes, right? Oh, uh, they always her parents are always invited, but her like her brother and her are not always. So like her parents are well known enough that they're always invited to this thing, but Faye and Art are both very prominent lawyers at the best law firm in the city and they don't always get enough invites for the both of them to go. Right. So, it is very exclusive, so like just for you guys' reference. Gideon, do you know if any of uh, the officers are going? I I have not heard anything. No one has sent me any invites to go one way or the other. Well, I mean, we can sit nearby in a car, and if things look like they're going south, we can smash in through the front door again, I guess. I've always wanted to crash a party. Can you bartend, Tanner? Or Darling? Darling actually has bartended, right? I don't bartend so much as serve, which I'm sure they will need extra hands. That's true. That or um, I could use our that that power that you give me and take over surveillance as an animal. That's true. Since I do have that option, so I think I think I can get in regardless with one of those two options. I could wait in the bushes and waylay someone and steal their invitation. One of you could get in the back, like in the kitchens, and see if you can find anything in the storage areas. That's a better idea. <laughs> I, I could uh, pretend to be the, the security that they've hired, because I'm sure they've hired some security. And you know you know what they say, that if you just walk somewhere confidently, they'll that if you look like you know where you're going, they'll just let you, they'll, they'll let you in. And you could always ask your firm if there's any positions for that Friday and see what they say. That's true. Yeah, that's something I could I could check out. Don't know how I uh, if if they if they if they do say there is something at this place, how do I get myself on the job without being looking too eager to do it? You know, friends that are going to be there, and you'd like to keep an eye out for them. You're always eager to prove your value as an employee. <laughs> sure. So we've got a uh, security server, and I'm going to try to pretend like I'm delivering produce. 
It's worked for me before. Delivery, yeah. All right, well... Uh, how should I get in? You are helping me deliver produce. All right, one um, change to the plan. You're helping me deliver produce. <laughs> Tanner looks down at his one missing arm and goes, You want me to unload boxes? I like to be shown that I uh, employ people of all means. Okay, you own a produce company now. Darling rolls her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that means you have to buy the 3,000 cabbages. Like you could. No, I really couldn't. Oh, no, there's no way. Oh, my gosh, I think I could buy one. All right, so you guys have a plan to do all that. We have, like, what, like a week? Yeah, we have about a week. A week to sleep <laughs> after our long Or investigate more if you'd like. If there's other scenes you'd like to have, like, you guys have time right now. Can I give attention to my Sorceress Supreme tag? How are you doing that? What does this look like for Faye? I think she, so she's done kind of a lot of shape-shifting in this last little bit because she's changed into somebody else at the chatterbox and then changed into a raven shape. So I think she's working on making her changes faster and more subtle, if that's possible. She's just like practicing, like going into places and leaving as somebody else and that sort of thing. Okay. Yes, you can. I have three now on that. Does that trigger something? Uh, we'll level up between sessions. Okay, cool. There are two things that I would like to do. Like, mechanically, I want to work the case, and then there's, like, a scene that I want to have. Surprise, surprise. Do you want me to do that at the beginning of tomorrow or at the end of tonight? Or the beginning of next time or the end today? We can do it now. Uh, okay. So, the... Mechanical thing that I want to do is working the case. So that would just be like basically any of the leads that we have, like any bars that I've heard of, any of the people. What I'm trying to do is track down where the rose water's coming from. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, how is it getting into these places? Stuff like that. Okay. So I'll, I'll say you have three clues that you can spend at this party whenever you want to learn more about the rose water stuff. Uh, okay, that's fair. Yeah, so you, so you have three clues, and this way you can ask relevant questions when it comes up. You can probably do yeah stuff relating to the rose water. You can ask questions about. Okay, that's fair. Without having you, without having to make an investigate roll, so you can like have you have some free questions. Is what you got? Gotcha. Unless there's something you're dying to know right now, and then I could tell you something, but. I figured you'd like it better if you can ask it in the moment. Instead there of are things, there are already things that I know I would like to ask in the moment. Um, the only thing I would want to know now is if I could figure out, like, who's delivering it. Like, do if I see Lucia on any of these things, I would want to know that. Um, I'll say that's not a thing. You don't see Lucia around. Okay, that would, that would be really all I want to know then. Unless I could figure out exactly where it's coming from, which I don't think I can. Um, I will give you, so... Mark, mark down one of the clues, but you learn that, like, it doesn't seem to be coming from anywhere. Like, they're not getting shipments of it. Correct. Oh. It's almost like there's magic. Seamus, are you doing anything? Um, I need to talk to my boss at some point to try to get myself uh, assigned as security to this event somehow. Don't know if that's even possible, but... Okay. Well, we can do that. Do you want anything mechanical off the list, or no? I think it would give attention to one of his themes he would explore his was explored mythos yeah you can explore your mythos and yeah he wants to he wants to uh try try to explore uh the dog tags of knowledge because he seems to be getting he seems to have been getting a lot of clues lately that are like very fuzzy and like he gets like partial information and he wants to try to see if there's a way he can get deeper more clear information from them okay is that one one attention to that yep one attention Darling, are you doing anything mechanically? Yes. Um, so I am going to be paying attention to my mythos of Beauty Queen. And I'm going to be doing this by actually doing a little bit more investigating into the case. So I'm I'm exploring the mystery on that tag, which is who loves me for who I am. And what she's doing is she is going to the other bars, or I'm sorry, the other speakeasies that are on the list, which I think is two or three of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, she is only taking either Faye or Seamus uh, to give herself as much distance as possible from the other two. And she's just just doing like exactly what we did at the Red Phoenix and the Chatterbox. So she's ordering the drink. She tries some of the drink. She, I'm assuming, starts hearing voices just to kind of, like, officially confirm where all of these are. Okay. 
And I'll mark attention on my beauty queen. Yep, that works well enough. Yeah, I guess I, I didn't even think about it, but I guess the thing I did with my dog tags is exactly trying to answer my mystery. I mean, yeah, that's how that's how you're supposed to do it. So good job, everybody. Yeah, I just didn't I just didn't think of it that way. But yeah, that works. I didn't know if we were supposed to use the power tags involved because I don't think there's a lot of that involved with that one. So much as like, yeah, what what it says is tell everyone at the table which mystery you explore and how. You- and how you do it. Gain one clue with a method and a source based on your description, market attention, and, and on the mystery's theme. Gotcha. Um, you and Seamus, I'm going to say, can get clues if you guys want because you guys are doing stuff that relates directly to the case. Um, Faye, not so much. Faye's just kind of like working on her powers. So I'm not going to give Faye a clue. If you want to give us one clue for all of that, I think that's... Yeah, yeah I, I, I'll give... Between the three of you, you guys have one clue. So it's like a pool that anyone can draw that one from. Okay. So Tanner has two clues, and we combined have another clue. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, and then uh, I think the the narrative, like we do not have to do a scene for this because I think it is very montagey. I think in terms of Darling and Gideon, he has still been coming over to her place every night, but it's getting she's getting more belligerent about certain things. So like. Even though he has a key, she locks the door. She's been trying to take, like, every avenue to, like, fall asleep early. You know, like, things like that where it's, like, I don't want to deal with you type of interactions. He brings you a bouquet of red roses because he's confident that they're they're your favorite. And then he gets mad when you say that they're not your favorite. (laughs) But flowers are still nice, so they can just sit in the kitchen. So, Seamus... You walk into work on Monday morning. Well, what is my boss's name? Bill. Uh, good morning, Bill. How's it going? Morning, Seamus. Uh, same old, same old. New contracts for the week. Anything interesting? Mm, the friendly parties this weekend, which should be a pain in the butt. But, you know, other than that, it pays well, so. That's the party. That's the one I'm looking for, right? Yes. Oh, man. Yeah, I've, I've heard about that. and it's, it's always such a big event. Yeah, they only need a couple of us. They don't think we're white collar enough for it or something like that but it seems they're a little short staff this year it's a little bit bigger than usual i mean i don't did did i i don't think i've got any other any other uh jobs this weekend right so i mean i'd be willing to take that one if you need some if you need some help on it are you sure it's going to be stuffy white collar people looking down on you all evening and i you're a good worker seamus and i don't want to put you through that if you don't want to yeah i mean gotta do what you gotta do right I mean, yeah, but if you didn't want to, you've put in a lot of hours with that that weird detective who keeps calling, and I tell him to stop, but he keeps calling, and we keep sending you, and you seem to handle him all right. Yeah, he's... he's... He keeps bringing me cups of coffee randomly. It's weird. He says it makes us better friends, and I don't like it. Yeah, I think he he seems to think that coffee is like the way to the way to everyone's heart or something. I, I don't know, but he's he's a nice enough guy once you get to know him. It's always cold. I mean, he seems nice, but kind of creepy. So if you don't want this job, you know, you say the word and I'll, I'll give it to someone else. I can give it to Ron over there. You know, he hasn't done anything. He's had the last few weekends off, you know, and you had to work last weekend with him, with the, the detective. So I don't want to overwork you. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I guess I'm just looking for a little change of pace. Something a little different. Uh, then it's yours, I guess, you know. You know the usual thing. File out, you know, fill out the forms, you know, sign here, here, you know. Yep. You know the jazz, like, let me know when you have all the paperwork done. I'll stamp it and get you your uniform. Apparently, it's, we have to wear tuxedos for this. Oh, man. Definitely fancy. Ugh. They also said you can brew, they do want weapons, but make sure they're concealed. Don't bring anything super ostentatious. You know the drill. I'm guessing this won't be too too much, right? And he pulls out his 45. Nah, that should be fine. So you go through the morning, going through all the usual paperwork of getting, signing up for a job, you know, like signing NDAs and all that junk, you know. Signing NDA to a piece of security at a party. You might see <laughs> some stuff, all right? You might see some things. Am I going to see, is there going to be like a like a rich people orgy or something? Is that what I'm sending an NDA for? So I, so I can't disclose whose parts I saw in who and... <laughs> You're not allowed to tell who was there is a lot of the thing, the kind of thing. Like, they're very, like... Gotcha. Basically, they don't want the lower class talking about them because they're jerks. Wouldn't this be, like, all over the news? Like, the socialite news of who was invited and who wasn't? I don't know. It just seems like a thing that old newspapers would have. I think it's not, like, in the newspapers. I think, like... 
No, I, it, thought... I think in like high society circles it might be, but they don't tell the lower people. Why would they tell the lower people? Right. I, okay. It's not. I don't think like it's it's like in tabloids, which people don't respect. Equivalent. Okay. So like the high society doesn't care about that, but they're trying to like. It's not on like reputable news sources. Yeah, the high society people would know. Like, oh man, I wasn't invited, but so and so was. But the tabloids, the tabloids would only get rumors of that, and not official sources. Right. And I think a lot of the high society people like try to pretend that they were there. Oh, gotcha. That's fair. I was just thinking like this is the time where like newspapers would print like the names and addresses of single people. So, you know. I think the Fenleys work hard on keeping who's coming secretive because okay. like there's part of it where it's like Oh, we want there to be a rumor mill about this. We okay. want it to be kind it's of secretive. It's supposed to be like you, enviable to get invited because you don't know anything about it. Okay. Right? Like it's like it's That's enviable fine. to That's be fine. invited. It's really cool, and like the less you know, like the more you like want to pretend you're there, and like there's a lot like it gives it more of an air of mystique to it. Yeah, I got it. Um, I will say that Faye has probably been to a few of them before. She's not a regular by any stretch, but right. I don't think this is her first rodeo to yeah. this particular party, even. But anyway, Seamus has all that you get a you get a rent a tux if that was a thing back then who cares you get a rent a tux <laughs> and i i just imagine how how hilarious it looks on him where he's kind of a big guy wearing a tuxedo <laughs> it actually looks really nice like you, you like you think it will look really funny but it is very well tailored to fit you okay because this is a like you you go to like high-end tailors for this oh yeah i guess they would they would like pull out all the stops for it yep <laughs> And it is, like, it, it's, because you're like, oh, this is never going to work. And then, it like, it's the nicest fitting suit you've ever worn. And you were in the military where it had very nice fitting clothes. <laughs> yeah. And Seamus kind of thinks to himself, kind of says, kind of himself, not, like, to anyone in particular, like, after he's, like, actually, like, when he's, like, looking at himself in the mirror, he's like, I don't even want to know how much this costs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tanner. Cool. So Tanner is going to be walking up to Darling's door at like noon on Wednesday, I would say. Because like you work evenings, correct? Yes. So that would be like kind of your morning-ish? Yes, that's also a day I have off. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Is Gideon there or not? Um, he seems to be getting up early and ditching. Okay. Like, I don't know what he does during the day. Still making terrible breakfasts. I, I don't think you've gotten a good breakfast yet. From him, no. And I think they, like, have gotten progressively worse because he's upset with you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so Tanner knocks on the door. Uh, Darling comes and opens it. Um, sorry for the unannounced visit. I would say I was in the neighborhood, but that is a lie. So I actually just wanted to come over and talk to you. Uh, she smiles at him. Yeah, come on in. Is Gideon here, by the way? Because, like, if he is, this is going to be exponentially more awkward. <laughs> no, no, he's not. He's not here right now. Great. <laughs> um, also, before I come in, real quick, um, should I back off a little bit? I feel bad for bringing up that we might be a thing in the car, because you seem to be annoyed by that. Which is fair, we hadn't really discussed if we are an item, and I didn't mean to make that assumption. And I can, I'm fine with the answer being, I don't know, but if the answer is absolutely not, that I would like to know. The answer is that I don't want you to back off, but I also am dealing with some things right now no that i understand it just makes this incredibly less awkward and he hands you a very large bouquet of mixed flowers i'm not really sure which is your favorite i asked gideon he said roses he was wrong but uh, you know <laughs> if you look into the apartment you can see the roses oh i on. see you got roses yeah um thank you this this is very very sweet that's I put there's a poem on it as well. She reads it. What does it say? I can't wait to hear this. <laughs> oh, you're darn right. I wrote you a poem. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I was like, Cody would not bring up a poem if he hadn't written a poem. Right. Of course, I wrote a poem. I wrote it two weeks ago, and then I didn't even get to read it. Oh. <laughs> Dibs on dating Cody next arc. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's like clearly written in his handwriting, on uh, like carefully folded, you know, and attached to the flowers. It says, fair eyes call out in a lonely cold night. Oft the frost of the long winter makes beauty a concept remote. 
Yet the promise of spring growth brings hope. One kiss, the breath of warmth. One laugh, a budding vine shot forth. The lonely bear survives the long winter cold, for seasons have taught him the bliss spring love holds. Aww. And it just says, a poem for darling. As she's reading it, her smile is getting like bigger. And uh, when she's done, she leans over and gives you a kiss. Uh, Tanner's like very happy about this. Uh, like he's like giddy and beaming. Z- so did you know, like back in Norse times, it was literally illegal to write love poems because they were worried it would be too effective. And I feel like I usually pull that off pretty well. I mean, I will say that this one was very effective. (laughs) So, I'm glad that I shouldn't back off, but do you need time to figure out you and Gideon? I don't know if I need time so much as a divine intervention. I mean, I could hit him with a car. I don't think that's going to do it. Are you also, sure? I'd rather you not kill him. You probably wouldn't kill him. He seems tough. I've been hit by a car. I'm okay. I don't have to hit him with a car. No, don't hit him with a car. <laughs> no, I mean, it's it's really hard to describe what is going on with me and Gideon. Uh seems to be more supernatural than anything else. I mean, I can understand that. And I don't really know how to stop that. So I don't know how long that's gonna take. I mean, you could give him the flowers back. Or like never see him outside of work. I don't think that's how that would work, Tanner. It, it, do, you, do you understand when I say it's supernatural? Yeah, I do. I do. Like, I don't... I, I can't explain it. Like, something just keeps bringing us back together, and I, I'm i done with it, but it's not done with us. Yeah, no, I mean, I joke about hitting him with a car, but... Yeah, having weird powers seems to come with some baggage. I do kind of want to hit him with a car. At least your thing keeps dragging you back into bad romances. My thing makes me, like, fly off the handle sometimes and kill people. We all got stuff. (laughs) We all got stuff. (laughs) (laughs) My, My point is, I understand that, and I'm, like, here for the long haul. You don't have to, like, figure this out today or I disappear if you, unless you want me to. But if you want me to s- still be around, I will be, you know? Like, if you need time to figure things out with Gideon or for Gideon to leave of his own accord or if you need me to hit Gideon with a 4x4, you know, <laughs> all of these are options that I am open to is my point. Uh, Darling puts the flowers down and uh, kind of throws herself at him and kisses him fade to black yeah Hey Wanderers, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Naptown Chronicles. If you want to hear more content from the Wandering Gamer Network, you can check out the Wandering Gamer Network website. We also post Let's Plays that we do on YouTube under the channel Wandering Gamer Network. On Twitch, we can be found at wandering underscore gamer underscore network, and you can follow us on Twitter at the WGN Podcast. We're also on Facebook and Instagram. The intro and outro music was composed by Caitlin Balgaman, who voices Faye in this podcast. All other music is openly licensed or in the public domain. Now, sleeper, it is time to rest. And remember, 
It is the gods who envy us.